Late last year, this video took the gaming world by storm. What you're watching now is not real footage, it's a game designed to look like a body cam. The video was released by its developer, Alexandre Spindler, and instantly it went viral. And I think it's pretty obvious why. This game at a glance looks almost completely real, but it also appears like it might just be some clever engine trickery that would never really function as a video game. Or at least that's what we thought until Alexandre and his indie team revealed a new trailer for Unrecord. They're now making a story-driven Unreal Engine 5 single-player FPS where you play as a tactical police officer trying to solve a complex case told from the perspective of your body cam. The gameplay will extend beyond just shooting bad guys to a multi-choice dialogue system and a diverse set of characters. Now obviously the interest in this game stems from its presentation. It's doing a ton of interesting things to help convince your brain that what you're watching isn't a game, including techniques like face blurring on characters. And today I want to take a deeper look at some of these things and try to break down what makes Unrecord so realistic and also how it's going to play. Some of the tricks appear obvious to me while Others are much more subtle. Now, one of the first things that stood out to me as just being exceptional is the animation. All of the weapon manipulation animations, hand gestures, and third person character animations look extremely real. And the crazy thing is, an animator working on Unrecord, Milton Hort, said that the weapon and hand animations are actually hand keyed as opposed to being motion captured. Building these animations from the ground up is no simple task. And looking at the rest of Milton's demo reels, it's clear that he has a talent for this specific type of look. His Mark 18 Glock demo reel looks like it was setting the groundwork for more realistic weapon animations. There's an incredible timing to each action, some shakiness to the movement, and you can even see the momentum of the weapon having an effect on the actual stability. Now this style may not be desirable in your typical multiplayer shooter as it could be distracting or make it harder to actually scale the animation speed and likely require a lot more work per weapon to implement. Just looking at the latest Call of Duty game, videos of the reloads have impressed viewers to the tune of billions of views. And the COD animations are extremely impressive, but Call of Duty is a game where gunplay has to take precedent over the presentation in many aspects. So while the animations from Modern Warfare 2 do look realistic sort of outside of combat when just watching them, the actual gameplay and stuff tends to break the immersion. Animations get cut off before they finish, weapon models are deliberately poised to hide small details that would be a pain to animate, plus the quickness, accuracy, and speed of it all makes it seem a little less human. Just look at what happens to the reload animation when you start sprinting in Modern Warfare 2. It gets cut off and transitions quickly to the character model sprinting. Now look at Unrecord when the character goes from walking to sprinting. There's very little cheating happening with the animations, especially when he stops sprinting and regrips the pistol. And when looking at Unrecord, it appears that they're putting the presentation above Above all else. It's hard to say how the gameplay might be affected by some of these weapon animations, but it's certainly impressive to look at. Often when VFX artists talk about what makes CGI convincing, they bring up those small imperfections that you'll only notice subconsciously if they're absent. The pores on your skin stretching when you smile, muzzle flashes being a light source instead of overlaid in post, adding imperfections in the compositing process like smoke or camera shake, and all these things when combined together create convincing visual effects and it's very clear that the devs making Unrecord know what they're doing. To me, one of the more obvious examples of the imperfections being added to the animation is just how much the secondary movement the character arms make as they move. The gun isn't just locked into the center of the screen. It wobbles around like it would if you were to move in real life. This is something that a lot of modern FPS games do, but they only go so far because in a multiplayer FPS, your gun model has to represent where it's being aimed as much as possible. And the other aspect of the animation that stands out is just how many unique animations there are on the trailer. And while I'm sure a bunch of it is recycled animations being used multiple times, the addition of that secondary motion caused by the character moving hides a lot of that repetition incredibly well. To me, the only time the animation really sort of breaks down or looks too repetitive is when the character kicks a door open and when he takes his hand off the gun and the finger sort of stale curled up like an action figure's hand. Outside of those two moments, there's very little going on to actually pull you out of the realism. 
Now the enemies seen in the trailer are shown in glimpses or rather flashes of action so it's hard to see how they react in detail to gunshots since the whole screen goes kind of crazy during gunfire. But the way that they interact with the environment after being shot does sell the animations really well. However at the end of the trailer when the character has his hands up in the surrender pose things fall apart just a little. His shirt doesn't crease or ripple the way that you might expect it to in real life and there's some jumpiness between his standing and falling animation states but none of that is stuff that couldn't be improved proved on nor does it stick out massively. You also completely forget about it when the entire room explodes. Now certainly a big cheat that the devs are employing is censoring faces. Like I mentioned earlier about the subtle details of VFX, there's nothing harder to make look real than a human face. It's the thing that we spend our entire lives staring at in the mirror. So taking advantage of the body cam theme and censoring the suspect's faces is a brilliant move by the devs. It basically ensures that they only have to worry about facial animations when they can do them convincingly. That's probably gonna save them a ton of time in the development, letting them focus on stuff that that they can't hide like all of those weapon animations. Now without question the biggest trick that the devs are using to make the game look so real is the whole body cam aesthetic. Simulating life and making it look photo real is crazy hard. Simulating life when filmed on a crappy body cam is less difficult. In fact the original viral video was made with an Unreal Engine level asset that other devs are familiar with. In fact I downloaded it and walked through the level. And looking at this level without the body cam fisheye effect, pixelation and blown out lighting it's much easier to see the imperfections in the world. It's still a great looking asset and Unreal Engine 5 is incredible, but it does illustrate how the devs are able to get around a lot of the limitations of the game engine when it comes to photorealism by crushing the color space, having the brightness levels blow out the sky, and reducing the clarity at the edge of the screen. Unrecord isn't making a game that looks like real life. They're making a game that looks like real body cam footage, which is a significant distinction. That said, it's still incredibly impressive, expertly done, and very innovative. The way that the camera's exposure changes when it's pointed at bright and dark objects is also convincing. It's not just them slapping some contrast and distortion onto the gameplay as a basic shader. They're simulating how a real camera behaves when you just set it on auto record or a standard body cam which is always set to auto. Now of course one of the bigger questions I have is how does it play and will it be fun to play? Watching the footage I couldn't help but think that playing this for any extended period of time might make me extremely sick. The motion sickness could get really intense but sometimes when you're actually in control of the character it can be less severe so it's hard to tell from the footage. Now also when it comes to aiming there's a lot of situations in the trailer in which the gun sights are not lined up with the camera. This makes the footage look far more real but also I believe the game is probably going to be using a healthy dose of auto aim to get the shots to land which honestly could work fine for a single player game that's based much more on presentation and your character's movement versus your aiming skills. In fact it would be kind of interesting if the gameplay skill revolved more around how you clear an environment based on your cover and pieing angles versus just your aiming skill. Anyway, I'm quite impressed with the trailer and I think the devs could have a huge hit on their hands if the rest of the game follows the same quality level of what's been shown so far. Intelligently, there's no release date for Unrecord at this point, but you can be sure that I'll be covering it when it comes out. But what do you guys think? Is this new body cam technique going to be a neat one-off or do you think it's going to kick off a whole wave of body cam shaky shooters? Let me know in the comments. Next up, check out this video about an AI anti-cheat that may actually end cheating in video games. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.